Howdy, howdy, ho, good peoples of the world. It is Monday night, and the Miami Heat have tied it one to one against the Denver Nuggets. Luckily, I don't give a shit about the NBA. However, uh, since I lived in Denver for quite a long time, I guess I'm just kind of hoping that Denver wins because it'd be nice to see Denver's basketball team win one for the Gipper. So for all of those of you that do care about NBA, uh, it's one-to-one. -one. At least it's a good series and it's not a wipeout. So what is up, Scott K? Luckily, it is 7.36 here, and uh, Scott K is not sleeping. He can be awake, ready for this. Uh, we got Mr. Herman back in the chat. Cher Herman, Sherman, where have you been? That's good to see you, buddy. Um, Para's in the, the set chat. Ah, uh, Ivanator, of course, to support her hubby. Um, <clears throat> I want to know if Ivy really likes this music that we're going to hear tonight. Again, I could be totally surprised, but it could be Tori Amos. It could be anime. It could be... I don't know. Pretty much that's it. And uh, I'm guessing it's more like anime. I haven't looked at the titles, haven't looked at anything yet. Um, just loaded them. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, let's get to this set. Jason, how are you feeling, buddy? Are you ready to, uh, like, do you, Jason, uh, and maybe I'm asking this to everybody who turns in sets, when we're about to do this and we're about to listen to the songs that you have chosen, does anybody get, like, giddy, like, really happy and excited? Think about it all day long because you're like, okay, I'm going to get to expose my songs and share with people. Do you like get nervous uh, because you're afraid people are gonna shit on it and think it sucks? Um, it looks like Jason says he's jazzed, uh, except we're not gonna be listening to jazz. I'm guessing. Well, that would be funny if you if if that was kind of like a foreshadowing wink wink. That'd be hilarious if we were listening to jazz tonight and you were jazzed about it. <laughs> so um, yeah, so it looks like uh, Herman says he looks forward to turning in sets and people listening to it. Um, so what happens, Scott, if you don't think it's a banger, I can understand you getting excited if you think people are going to like it, but what happens if you like know in your head, most likely people are not going to like it. Uh, so Ryan gets excited too. Um, <laughs> Ivanator says she taps her fingers and, uh, with the evil laugh. That's pretty hilarious. Yeah. So very interesting. Well, we're going to get to find out Jason, what people think of this set, because, so far, we have six people in the chat for a Monday night. That's not very good. Usually on a Monday night, we have 10 to 15. So let's hope that that climbs up there. Uh, Mr. McGill um, hopefully can, you know, get his aura uh, all about and get people in the chat so they can hear this. So uh, let's see what Jason has to say. Let me find the email. All righty. So. Jason says this, he says, after my YouTube centric set list, I decided to keep up the theme of doing a thematically different kind of set list and bring you my video game music set. So like, this is like a set of like video game music that you play or that you've liked over the years. Is it current? Is it past? These are some of my most favorite songs from video games spanning decades. Okay, well, you just answered my question. Thank you. Read and you shall find out. Um, this is my, some of my most favorite songs from video games spanning decades of my nostalgia. All of these songs have lyrics, so they aren't your typical instrumental backgrounds. Um, kind of like Baldur's Gate would be. I know you guys will roll your eyes at the music for some of them, but I hope that some will recognize or be interested in some of the games and songs. I will definitely be in left field on this one because, again, I don't play games and I haven't really, unless it's like Nintendo or Sega Genesis, I'm probably not going to know what it is. This will also be one of my more spread out range wise, I think from what we normally share and even for what I've shared with you guys so far. So let's get into number one. This is, I think it's Utada Hikaru, Hikaru, Utada Hikaru, and the song is called Simple and Clean. Is it simple and clean? Refreshing so clean. Um, this is the main theme song of my favorite game series ever, Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts? I've never even heard of that game. Though the opening version of the song was remixed, 
This version is the version that comes out or comes at the end of the game as the credits roll. Anybody else play Kingdom Hearts that would know this? After this game came out, everyone knew the song as the Kingdom Hearts song and the and Utada Hikaru, I think it's how you say it, would come to do the theme songs for each subsequent game in the series. Kingdom Hearts is the combining of the highly pro popular Final Fantasy series with that of Disney in this art JRPG epic where a trio of childhood friends get separated and explore popular Disney worlds in hopes to reunite and figure out the mystery of dark forces that hound them wherever they go. This idea came to me because at the time in Japan, the Disney Interactive Studio and Squaresoft, not yet Square Enix, whatever that means, shared the game or same building in Japan and a head from each company discussed an idea, an elevator, that building and thus the 13 game series of epic proportions was born. How cool. That is a cool backstory, Jason. I'll give you that. Let's hope the music actually sounds as good. So here we go with Simple and Clean. Uh, it wasn't like an introduction, it just went like right into it. Is that right? Wow, making me feel simple and clean. Who's singing this? Because I don't know if it's supposed to sound like that, but her voice sounds quite shaky. So what's the point or what's the purpose of the shaky voice? Poor emotion. Okay. Like she's quivering in ecstasy. I can hack that. Yeah, this is so interesting, like, Jason, do you really listen to it, unlike Ryan and Scott, that don't seem to really... Do you really pay attention to the music, or is it just you play it so much that it gets ingrained in your mind? But like I said, is it because you've played it so much it's gotten used to you've gotten used to it or is it like you really when playing games try to pay attention to the music what up jim <laughs> ivy <laughs> how do you feel about that ivy Uh, Hera and Scott, are there any games, obviously not this one, but are there any games where you would go outside of it? Like, I didn't play the game, but the dream, you know, John Petrucci Necromonicon song, I would listen to that. I don't even play the game. It's a sick song. Is this building at all, or does it just stay like this?
Oh, that was interesting how she said that. The future, the way she pronounced it. Yeah, this ending actually does sound kind of Tori Amos. Or like, what was that song? Um, Natalie Umbrugella. How do you say her name? Huh? It sounds like a. I'm torn. <laughs> kind of sounds like that. Yeah, Herman, I can see that too. Like, if you played this game all the time, which is why I asked him. Is it like you play the game so much that it just kind of gets burned in your memory or and then you like like it? It's at the end. Natalie, um, how do you say her last name? Natalie Brungella or something like that. I'm torn. All right, song number one in the books. Uh, I would say that was kind of like a, just a chill song. A little repetitive didn't really go many places just but if it is a background to a game i guess that would make sense uh, a little more uh, imbruglia imbruglia oh that's how you say it okay imbruglia i'm bruglia imbruglia i'm bruglia imbruglia i'm bruglia <laughs> um yeah i mean it makes sense and should be a little more forgiving if it's a backtrack to like a, a game that you're playing but Outside of that context, it was pretty repetitive, kind of the same thing over and over again. But uh, I don't know if I'd put it on playlist ever, but it's catchy. I can see where it's catchy. <clears throat> um, oh, okay. Autocorrect. That's why phones don't use phones. All right. So song number two, he says. Um, mm -mm 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 -mm. Utada he. Aru, which is the same thing we just listened to, featuring Skrillex. Oh, this is going to have some breakdown dubstep, I'm sure. Face My Fears is the name of the song. It's a short one. This is the opening song of the third numbered title of the Kingdom Hearts series released in 2019. Okay, so we're staying with the same kind of game. This would be the game that culminates the end of what would be known as the Dark Seeker Saga before the new saga beginning with the fourth numbered title normally i'm not a fan of skrillex but his impact on the song is light and actually i feel works quite well with utada's voice in this song okay so utada's the singer i didn't get it uh and with skrillex so i guess maybe there isn't going to be any dubstep if dubstep if he has like a, a light a light touch on it here we go with face my fears I didn't say no phones. I just said that's what you get with phones. Should I take the lead? Uh, what's this girl look like? I'm trying to like connect her voice with her look. Does she look like her voice, or does she look completely different than what her voice is? Okay, that's a little. Almost like that would go into a break. Okay. It's almost got like a reggaeton feel. Oh. Are you being serious, Jim? How do you know that? Oh, yeah, I can hear the Skrillex now. I was like, I don't think Jim knows that. <laughs> yeah, that definitely has a Skrillex feel to it, but you're right, Jason, it doesn't really like go crazy, or at least not yet. I definitely like the song better than the first one, I'll say that. Face my fears. Oh, let me face, let me face, let me face my 
J-pop? I don't really know J-pop, but it sounds different than J-pop. Or I expect J-pop to sound. Oh, actually, Para goes against the grain. At least there's this like electronic breakdown. A little bit. I like that part. That's a catchy kind of. <laughs> Para doesn't like the beat. I think the that let me face, let me face, let me face my fears is very catchy. I will say this, Jason. Out of all the anime slash gamey, whatever you want to call it, songs that we've listened to that you put on this channel, that last song would definitely be the first to go on a playlist. But I'm not saying it's going to. But if I were to put one of these songs on a playlist, I think that would be the closest thing coming to me putting it on a playlist. So... I thought that was a little catchy, not too bad. It was repetitive, like most of that stuff is, but that is kind of catchy. So I'll take it. All right, let's get into the next one. Um, uh, Shoji Meguro san? Shoji? I think it's Shoji Meguro. Featuring Len. In Izumi, in Izumi, vocals is on vocals. So Lin in Izumi, in Izumi, is that how you say it? Wake up, get up, get out there. Wake up, get up, get out there. Okay, so it's kind of like a plea. Um, while being an excellent song of the Persona series, is Persona a game? I chose this song mostly because of the genre. It was considered, since I know Cap loves to hear all these interesting genre names. <laughs> yeah. This song is considered acid jazz, very interesting, and I feel it is a good description. The song comes off of the fifth game in the Persona series and is the opening theme that gets you hyped up for the story ahead. In Persona 5, you play a Japanese high schooler who unfortunately is accused of assault and was forced to change schools, be put under probation, and sent to the care of a family friend called Sojiro Sakura. 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 Sakura-san. Um, during his one-year probation, you will join him on his journey through a new school and the strange occurrences that interrupt and threaten his probationary life. So that's such an interesting game concept to me. Like, obviously, if you're trying to conquer something and you fight, what's the point of this game? Like, what do you do? Do you fight other people or do you just kind of walk through and make decisions kind of like a choose your own adventure game like how how is this work as far as the game is concerned here we go with number three <laughs> This is like something that I would hear on my like PD12 kit that allows me to play drums to it. I like the bass. Seriously, it sounds like a TD12 loop. Already, I definitely like the song. Ooh, 
sounds like Jamiroquai a little bit. That bass especially sounds like Jamiroquai. And the singer sounds like that um that band that we've had on here twice called Knower. Is it Knower? They're like a weird kind of a shoot the video in their house and she's like this little Asian thing. Her voice a little bit sounds like her. A little more soulful than her. And not as high. Okay, so you fight inside the dungeons of people's hearts? What does that even fucking mean? Yeah, I want it doesn't make any sense to me when you say that. What do you is it are there actual fights but the world is like in someone's heart? Oh wow. There's no way this person doesn't know English. Whoever told you that Jason is lying, this person knows English. This reminds me of that band. I think it's Nowhere, right? Yeah, but the pronunciation is what I'm kind of talking about. You, you can't, like, be that good at pronunciating a language you don't have any clue about. Like, even when Koreans who are awesome sing stuff in English, it just, you can hear the accent. It's impossible. This girl sounds like an English speaker completely. Girls are good at that. Don't forget about that. I think anybody sings better than Dave Matthews. <laughs> I like him too, but he can't sing English words. <laughs> it's just notes. Oh, yeah, with um, Tim. Is that it? Yeah, that uh, one album with uh, Tim Reynolds is really good. Thank you. Lots, lots of good songs. I like Tim Reynolds' little uh, runs on the acoustic guitar. Acoustic guitar. -y. All right. So I definitely think that one was the best so far because it had a groove to it. Um, had like a mix of Jamiroquai and... Just, just laid down the groove pretty well. I actually would maybe put that song on a playlist. I liked it. Um, yeah. So, I, I definitely like that one the best. And I don't know. If you keep going this, Jason, I might put some of these songs on playlists. I think that third one might, might go on a playlist. I don't know what playlist it would go on. Uh, but I think I definitely would. All right. So, um, this is number... Oh, four. Uh, this is called Lotus Juice and Shihoko Irata, and it's dance with an exclamation point. So you motherfucking dance. 
The Persona series is known for its interesting mixes of genres and how it incorporates them into their games. This song is the opening theme song to a spinoff title of the main series called Persona 4, Dancing All Night, a rhythm game which has you matching timing of the beat for popular Persona 4 songs that have been remixed for the games, as well as the originals. It features the main cast of the main game joining their idol friend Rise Kuchikawa and her return to the stage as background dancers for a big event called Hearts Meet Bonds, where she would announce her return to being a Japanese idol. Instead of beating up evil shadows, you use your dance moves to sway the crowd and defeat the evil that tries to sabotage the show. Who comes up with these ideas for a freaking game? This song is an interesting mix of disco, rap, and pop that I find fun and catchy. All right, well, this is called Lotus Juice and Shihoko Hirata. Four. Am I missing something? Oh, okay, I was like, you know song? Here's another one. Yeah, I can hear the disco. Little laugh. Again, this sounds like that knower girl a little Definitely don't like this as much as the other ones. But, oh, okay. Do a little bit of hustle dance. Hustle is the disco dance. my mouth. I keep hearing this. Bass player is definitely rolling. Jason, I'm gonna have to say, I'm already gonna declare it. This might be my favorite set by you. I'm not joking. Even if I don't put these on playlists necessarily, it's definitely the best playlist I've heard from you. Ryan's upper, that, that's like a Gumby dance. I'm gonna call you Gumby Ryan dance. <laughs> Gumby wouldn't move his upper body, he'd just move his bottom. Is that it? Dun, 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 dun. Upper bodies for headbanging. 
Dun, dun, dun. All right. So, yeah, I didn't like that song as much as the three and two, but I did like it more than one because it still had that disco y kind of feel and that. Um, yeah, but I definitely think three is the best song so far Two kind of right behind it. So, all right, Jason, I'm telling you, this is definitely a good set by you. I think, um, I definitely connecting more to it than the other previous stuff that you have, uh, not all of it, but some of the, mostly the other anime stuff. I just don't connect to the anime stuff very much. And this connects more, even though it's in the video game style, which could be anime and Japanese, blah, blah, blah. It's still, I think it's better choices for me. All right, next one is a long song, comparatively. This is Shihoko Hirata. Hirata. Uh, now I Know is the name of the song, and it looks like Yuri Mirake. Mir, Mir, I don't know if it's a remix, whatever that remix is. It's Y-U-U. Another remix song from the Dancing All Night game, the original sung by Shihoko, was featured in another spin-off title called Persona 4 Arena. Another how many per, how, how many spin-offs are? Is it kind of like the Batman 62 and Spider-Man 78 and sings uh, of the main character a robot girl who only discovers she's a robot later into the game, having now been freed of the mystery behind herself looking towards the future and its possibilities. Now that she is free to choose what she wants to be. Normally, I'm not a big fan of electronic mixes for songs, but this is one is very energetic and I feel captures the feeling of being free to do what you want, in my in my opinion, of course. This is the full version, which I'm sure you guys feel might be too long, but the shorter version used in the game loses some of the build up and feel that I enjoy in full versions, which when it comes to electronic, you kind of have to have that build up maybe. So here we go, number five. Now I know. Okay, I'm glad you know Michael, because I thought, I'm not saying it sounds like her, but that just has that kind of same sense as her. Yeah, that's what I figured it looked like you, but I didn't. That's what I said the first time, but I just didn't know for sure. Giving us a little insight into Jason. A little crazy on the dance floor, huh, Jason? Jim, how do you know this could be the best one? It hasn't done anything yet. You're already calling for it. Something like hit my window. There's like a really big bang on my window.
Just want to make sure no one's trying to break into my freaking house. It's really odd. All right, so we'll start again. Yeah, hide the weed. Didn't hear anybody say anything, but it was a really loud hit. All right, well, I haven't heard it since. I'm just going to keep going. Sorry for the pause. Here we go. Half time. Just go get it in the other room. <laughs> Triple time. Oh, okay. This is like kind of scurrilous all of a sudden. I was getting not interested in this song until this part. Saturday and Sunday, 
and then today it's been like almost cold because of the mist that's over Columbus. The song is very repetitive. I do think the seven minutes is too long in this case, for sure. fading out finally that song went way too long for for the repetition that it was i definitely don't think it uh jason you said it needed the build up but i would say it didn't <laughs> but jim loved it jim is creaming his pants <laughs> so uh yeah i still have three and two as my favorite i'll put five right in the middle and then four and then one although i think i'm gonna change my mind I'm going to put four above five because the disco part of four was way more memorable than five for me. Other than the two little breakdowns of electronic slash dub. Um, yeah. So that's my thought all night one. Let's get to the last one and wrap this set up again. I'm going to state it again. Jason, this is my favorite set by you. All right. Uh, this is Norihiko. Norihiko, Norihiko, Hibino, Hibino. That doesn't seem Japanese. I guess Hibino, Hibino. Um, vocals by Cynthia Harrell, Harrell. I think it's Harrell, Cynthia Harrell. The song's called Snake Eater. I'll show you a snake eater. <laughs> Not me. Uh, so this is Norihiko, Hibino, Hibino, I think. Vocals by Cynthia Harrell. Harrell. Uh, and to end off this set list, I give you a song I think you guys might enjoy more than the re more than the rest. From the best stealth tactical action title, Metal Gear Solid 3. Okay, let me say that again. From the best stealth tactical action title, Metal Gear Solid 3. This is the intro song. Norihiko wanted a Bond-esque theme to start off this game. And he delivers it with precision. In Metal Gear 3, so Solid 3, you follow Naked Snake. <laughs> That's a funny name, Naked Snake. His call sign, which comes from the fact that he's been sent in with no gear. Okay, Naked Snake. As he is sent out through the jungles and forests of 1960s era Soviet Union, searching for information on his supposedly defected trainer, codenamed Boss and to assassinate her bo her before it becomes an inter international crisis. And possible information on a new nuclear delivery system being called the Shagahad, which is John Feedy's friend's band. So Jason, did you bring this up in uh, John Feedy's set when he showed Shagahad his friend's band? Did you talk about that with him? Because I would not know that word Shagahad unless I had heard the band several times because of John Feedy. All right, so this is the last song. Uh, it's only a 258 or so it's a very short song. Let's see if it is as good as stated. I like that. Dun, 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 dun. What a thrill. Okay. With darkness and silence through the night. Jason, why'd you say, damn it, Cap? Did I do something? Searching and I'll melt into you. I do like this. What a fear in my heart. But your soul supreme. This is like a fight song? It's kind of weird for a fight song. What? Really? This is one of the top three games I've ever? I don't know where Feedy is. He's been gone for a while now. I hope he's okay. This is an interesting song. Not what I expected at all. Oh, my joke. Hey, the title of the song is going to be that. It's calling for a joke. You go through the rain. This 
this is an odd song to be honest. Now, I'm sure if you played the game and stuff, it's cool, but to me, it's weird. Yeah, probably true, fair enough, because that Artificial Language album is awesome. I'm liking it. Cutscene, okay. That voice is kicking. James Bond as a female. That makes sense. Just on the sheer singing alone. Her voice is good. She's hitting some. Like, is she a snake eater? I love it. She does. Just her voice alone makes me want to be a snake eater. The song's growing on me. It's growing on me. How can it not grow on me? Get it? <laughs> She's going to do at the end. All right. I guess that is the end. It is a 258 or so. I'm going to put that one above four and five, mostly for the loungy singing. I think the lounging singing was was good. Um, I do apologize that I just I've never played any of these games. I don't even know them. I don't even know the names. I think I have heard of Metal Gear itself, but I didn't know there was like Metal Gear Three and stuff like that. So, um, okay, a Quentin Tarantino type Japanese creator. Yeah, uh, but even without knowing the games and having the nostalgia of being connected to the games, um, I liked some of the songs. I definitely think uh, number three will go on a playlist, maybe number two. And if I listen to six again, that could, I could, it could grow on me because I like her loungy singing. So, um, yeah, Jason, uh, I definitely like this kind of set. About a million times more than the anime, anime stuff, Dragon Ball C. This is, to me, way better. At least has some, like, some sort of normalcy to it. The bass lines, even the right, the way it's written versus, like, anime to me is just really kiddie stuff. Very just cartoony. Supposed to be, but just not for me. Tricks are for kids. All right, so that brings us to the end of our Monday night set. Jason, kicking ass. Um, just a reminder, um, that next, uh, Saturday is gym and we have nothing on Sunday and nothing or no, I'm sorry. I'm wrong again. I keep looking at the wrong thing. John Francois is on Sunday and we have nothing on Monday. That's what I meant to say. And then the following Sunday is going to be uh the old or new set that people need to turn in no i'm sorry it's colin's set and then on that s saturday following week up after that is the older new winners so the older new winners are on june 24th so that's quite a while away i mean it's 20 days away. so keep that in mind you guys have a great week and uh, this is the busiest week for me uh, as i said i'm so tired right now from today today was crazy um, but I will see you guys on Saturday. Peace out. Get up.